14 months ago I was diagnosed with gallstones. It came as a bit of a shock because I always thought I'd had kidney stones. For about 10 years on and off I'd been having pain and I always thought yeah another kidney stone I'm passing another kidney stone. How did I arrive at that diagnosis? Well 10 years ago I was hospitalized with the pain and they told me at the time that they thought I had kidney stones so I was misdiagnosed when in reality it was gallstones and the only reason that I got round to the gallstone diagnosis was a good friend of mine who's a surgeon said to me hey look I think you ought to go to the doctor and ask him to investigate gallstones because I don't think you've got kidney stones at all so that's what I did and sure enough gallstones it was and I joined the NHS waiting list to have uh, an operation which as I record this video is about two months away it's November now and I'm getting operated on in February. Originally I was going to be operated on just before Christmas but I've got a holiday booked three weeks in Portugal. Uh, I had a word with the surgeon and he said I couldn't travel after I'd had the operation so simple decision for me. I, I wasn't going to give up my holiday in Portugal. I've managed with the gallstones for quite some time now uh, and I can manage for a few more months. In fact as I record this video I've been suffering a little bit today with them. It's really low level pain, it's like a little bit of a stomach ache, lasts for about an hour or so. When I was diagnosed originally I had a really bad attack and I would count that as a 10 on the pain scale. Um, I was actually laid up overnight, I felt really bad. Uh, for a few days afterwards I, I suffered with uh, uh, stomach cramps and diarrhea and all sorts of things. After the visit to the doctor they sent me for blood tests and my liver function was, was poor at the time. So yeah, I was in a pretty uh, bad way at the time, which is why they uh, eventually put me on the waiting list to have an operation. But ever since then, I've actually lost quite a lot of weight. Uh, nearly two stone has dropped in the last 14 months. I've moved on to a very restrictive diet uh, and I feel really good. Uh, apart from the odd little grumble, the odd little uh, pain that I get. It's not nothing bad. I mean, it's a bit like a stitch, a bit like a cramping that you get in the side. Um, and I'm feeling it a little bit today. Um, but a walk around the Naves Mire, I'm sure will do me some good. But I thought I'd mention this because if there's one thing that's come out of this, I think I've always taken my health for granted. Now that I look back on it, um, I think that was crazy. I don't, I'm not quite sure why I, why I did. Uh, I've never really been particularly ill, I guess that's why. But once your health has gone, then what else have you got? All your plans are in, are in ruins. You know, if you can't do things because of your health, then it's really bad. So I thought I'd just make this video to talk about that topic, how we need to have a little bit of a wake-up call when we reach a certain age about the fact that we're not indestructible. We can keep going for quite some time as long as we're not ill. Take away that and everything, if you pardon my French, goes to shit. One of the books that's had the most profound effect on me is by a palliative uh, care nurse called Bronnie Ware. It's called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying, where she talks at length with her patients who are in the later stages of life about what they would do differently and what are the regrets that they would have. And one of the things that comes out of that book is how a lot of people spend too much time working or they spend too much time fretting about things that haven't happened yet and then when their health goes they regret that they wish they hadn't fretted they wish they hadn't been on the grindstone on the hamster wheel for so long because the knock-on effect of a lot of those things is that they don't enjoy their life as much as they can I mean they can try and convince themselves that they love their work I guess but the reality is, and particularly men, when they're in their later stages of life, most men do regret that they work too hard. Now, thankfully, I don't have that regret. I could have done, but I quit working at 44, took a bit of a career break. In reality, it was retirement. Although I didn't really declare myself retired until I got to be about, I guess, 49, 48, 49, something like that. Uh, but because I had no intention of returning to full-time work, I had no intention of pouring my heart and soul into building another business, 
that was it. I was retired. And it was a great decision. It was the right decision. It was made for a number of reasons at the time and I'm glad I made those reasons. But the one thing that comes out of that for me was that I haven't really looked after myself as well as I should have done even during the 10 years or so that, that followed me quitting work. I mean, I've worked out on and off. Um, I do quite a lot of walking and always have done, but I've always been a little bit off when it comes to my diet. I probably, I mean, I'm not somebody who has always kind of lived in McDonald's or anything like that, although I have to admit, I, I used to enjoy a McDonald's breakfast, the big breakfast, I think they call it. I do miss that. That's one thing I've not been having because of my uh, gallbladder complaint. But I didn't look after myself in the context of my diet. Um, and if I could rewind and have a little bit of a chat with myself, it would be that. Because I do think you reach an age where you just can't eat the things that you want to eat. Uh, how it manifested itself with me is that I gained weight. I obviously developed gallstones. And here I am at 63 years of age about to lose one of my organs. Um, and it could all have been prevented with just a bit of looking after myself. So, well, I haven't got the regret about working. Um, I do have the regret about not looking after myself better when I could have done. But the past is the past. We can't do anything about it. We can only learn from it. For me, I don't want to repeat the same mistakes that I made before. And going forward, when I've got no gallbladder, I'm probably not going to be able to eat that kind of food anyway, and that's a, a blessing. So for me, I've got a new regimen when it comes to food, and that is I try to eat as clean as possible. I'm not really interested in putting ultra-processed food down my neck. So for me now, it's a lot of raw food, salads, and if I do eat protein, I tend to eat chicken, salmon, and things like that. And the game plan is to continue on that sort of diet indefinitely. The gallbladder complaint has now created a completely new lifestyle for me, which I aim to continue. So now it's all about eating a balanced diet and getting all the proper nutrients without any of the crap. And there's one young lady in particular who I've been following on Instagram who is a nutritionist. So she's not a cook or a chef or any of those kind of things. Um, but she shares recipes based on the fact that she's an educated nutritionist and her name is Emma English. I'll leave her a link below. Uh, you can check her out. She's got a really good book called uh, So Good. Uh, I'll also leave a link in the description below for that one. It's a fantastic cookbook. Um, what I like about it is that it's not been written by Gordon Ramsay or somebody like that. It's been written by a normal person who has had eating issues and is able to pull together a series of recipes that are balanced. And she's really good. I really enjoy her watching her videos. And most Saturday nights, I'll cook something from her cookbook or from her um, Instagram uh, channel, something I've seen. I think she's got about uh, one and a half million followers on uh, Instagram and she deserves them all. So uh, yeah, check it out. Emma English on Inst Instagram, link in the description below. Once we get past 60, I think we're deluding ourselves if we think we're going to continue in good health. My good friend, the surgeon that I mentioned earlier, has always said that once you hit 70, the wheels really start to fall off. And your 60s are probably the last good decade where you're going to be in good health. And after that, it's a slow, steady decline. Now, I know that's quite extreme and a lot of people who are in their 70s and even 80s have commented on my channel uh, as to how well they're doing and how fantastic life is and that isn't the case for them but I don't think you can take it for granted that you're going to be one of them I think you've got to assume that you are not going to improve necessarily with age when it comes to your physicality you are slowly declining towards the inevitable end and that's why it becomes even more important at our age, and as I said earlier, I'm 63, to start putting a few things in place to make sure that you're gonna have some really good, healthy years that remain. And I think the most important thing that you can put in place is a form of healthy regime around two things. One, exercise, 
and two, your diet. Exercise, I just like to keep it simple. I walk like I'm walking today here on the Navesmire. I like to get in three to five miles every day. And the other thing I do is I like to go to the gym two or three times a week to lift weights. Nothing particularly strenuous, I just do simple exercises like bench press, things like that. Uh, I try to avoid things like deadlifts and squats, but I bench press, I do curls, I do overhead presses. I tend to work with a weight that can allow me to do between 10 and 15 reps. And the reason I do that is I don't want my muscles to waste. I want to stay physically active. Uh, and I've seen with some older people that they've uh, clearly haven't, haven't kept up to speed on that. So those are the two things that I'm going to be focusing on, particularly in my 60s. Uh, obviously partly to keep this grumbling gallbladder complaint at bay, uh, but also to uh, eat in a way that once this thing's gone, um, I can stay healthy. And for me that means eating three to five meals a day, smaller portions, good, clean, healthy food. No cakes, biscuits and rubbish like that. I do like a drink from time to time, not particularly a huge amount. I'm not a particularly a beer drinker, but I do like a glass of wine, particularly a nice red wine. And I do like a, a dram of whiskey from time to time. So for me, it's all about moderation with regards to those things. I think we've got to be realistic. You can't live your life in your 60s and your 70s uh, stuffing things down your neck that are bad for you um, and I've got no intention of doing that I, if I've only got say 20 years left um, I'm hoping for a lot more than that then I want to make sure that those 20 years are good healthy years anyway this is just a bit of a rant as I uh, walk around the Navesmire on this icy cold day in York it's beautiful and sunny but it's barely above freezing at the moment hence the the woolly hat and the gloves it's pretty cold it's Friday and if you've watched my videos for any length of time you'll know that Friday is the day when I take Uncle Archie to Tesco's and sure enough I've done that again today and I'm just about to go and pick him up. So uh, in future videos I'm going to explore in a bit more detail the six pillars that I've built up over the last decade or so to ensure that I do have a good latter half of life. Um, I'll share those in the future but for now I'm going to sign off. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time.